Hey everybody, welcome to Distance Learning Day 5. Today we're looking at more situations involving percentages. So the warm-up, David and I went to my favorite local Colombian burger joint, Mugs Up, and our meal was a total of $20. We decided to give our server a 15% tip. So the two questions, how much was that 15% tip in terms of dollars, and how much did we spend all together, including the tip? So take five minutes, try and solve this, and then come back once you're ready. All right, so I need to find 15% of 20 to be able to find my tip. So to be able to find 15% of any number, I first need to turn 15% into a decimal. So 15% divided by 100 is 0 0.15. So that is my percentage as a decimal. So now I am going to take the $20 that I'm trying to find the percentage of and I'm going to multiply by my percentage as a decimal. When I do that, I'm going to get $3. So $3 would be my tip. So now, how much did we spend all together, including the tip? Well, there's two different ways we can do this. The first one, I can find, um, okay, so my total meal was $20, plus the $3 tip we left would simply be $23. Or, I know that my meal which was $20, is my 100%. That's my original starting price. My tip, which was $3, would be 15%. I want to know these together added up, so that would be 115%, and 115% as a decimal, 115 divided by 100, is 1.15. So now I want to find 115% of the meal. So I take 115, I'm sorry, 1.15 times 20. And that is going to give me 23. So that is the same answer that we got. So we got the same answer, just different ways of solving it. This way is going to come in handy if they don't ever make you find that original 15%. If they just say, how much should we spend all together if we gave them a 15% tip? That way might be a little bit easier. Okay. So... A car dealership pays a wholesale price of $12 to purchase a vehicle. So a car dealer buys it from the manufacturer, manufacturer or even um, they can get used uh, cars from a auction. And so they bought a car for $12,000. And now this dealership wants to make a profit off of it. So... What this means is they can't take this $12,000 car and sell it for $12,000 and make any money off of it. They just break even. So they're going to increase the price and they actually are going to increase it 32% to be able to make a profit off of this. So by how much do they have to mark up the price of the vehicle to get a 32% profit? So we want to know 32% of $12,000. So again, I am going to have to turn 32% into a decimal by taking 32 and dividing by 100, and it's going to give me 0 0.32. And now I can take my $12,000 and multiply by 0 0.32. And that's going to give me 
840. So they need to mark up the car by $3,840. So now after the markup, what is the retail price of the vehicle? So including the $3,840 and the $12,000 they already bought it for, I want to know what the retail price or what they're going to, like, it's called a sticker price. They put a sticker on the car that says this is how much this car is worth. That what would the sticker price be? Well, there's two different ways. So the first way, I take the 12,000 that they bought it for, that's our 100%, and I add the 3,840. That I get 15,840. So the sticker price would be $15,840. Another way is writing an equation. So this would come in handy if we didn't actually find this 32% markup. So I know that the wholesale price that $12,000, that's my 100%. And I know my markup which we found is 3,840 is 32%. 100% plus 32% is 132%. Percent. And if I turn that into a decimal, 132 divided by 100 is 1.32. Okay, so we have our percent that we want and we turned it into a decimal. So now I'm actually going to take my $12,000 and multiply it by my 1.32. And it gives us the exact same answer of 15,840. So I could have done that over here I have my prices. If I just added these up, I would also get the same $15,840 here. Okay, so two different ways. This way is going to come in handy for this question. So during a special sales event, the dealership offers a 10% discount, so they're taking 10% off of the sticker price. And so they want to know after the discount, how much will the customer pay for this vehicle? Well, it's not having us originally find that 10% discount, and then it's not having us find, um, and then it's not having us subtract those later. So I could do that. So 10% is 0 0.1 because I take up 10% and divide it by 100. And so then I would take 15,840 and multiply it by that 0 0.1 and I would get 1,584. And then I'm taking that off of the 15,000. 840, so I'm going to subtract these. And when I subtract those, I'm going to get 14,256. Okay, so that would be the price after the discount. Or instead of having to do all those separate steps, 10% off, and 
is the same thing as 100% minus 10% because I'm taking 10% off of the sticker price, which is now our 100%. And I'm going to be, uh, I'm going to have 90%. 90% as a decimal is 0 0.9 because I take 90 and I divide it by 100 to get my decimal. And now I have the amount that I'm going to multiply my 100% by. And so I'm going to take my 15,000. 840 and I'm going to multiply by 0 0.9 so 15,840 times 0 0.9 is the same 14,256 that we found the different way Okay, so this way ended up being a lot quicker than finding the 10% and subtracting those two numbers. So, now let's look at commission at a gym. For each gym membership sold, the gym keeps $42 and the employee who sold it gets $8. What is the commission the employee earned as a percentage of the total cost of the gym membership? Okay, so there's a few things we need to talk about. First of all is what in the world is a commission? Well, a commission is um, the biggest um, thing I can think of with commission is when you buy a house. You have um, an agent that shows you around these houses. They get a commission or they get a percentage of the amount that the house sells for. So let's say the house sells for $150,000. They would get a certain percentage at the end and it would come out of the price of the house. So if it's um, like 10% of a $150,000 house, they would get $15,000 for selling that house. That's all that means. A commission is just getting some money for selling something. And so this person sold a gym membership and they got $8 from the total gym membership um, for selling that. And so now I'm going to find the percentage of the commission out of the total cost. So since we're trying to find a percentage, we don't know our percentage, I am going to take... A divided by B times 100, and that gives me my percent. Okay. So, my total cost of the gym membership is what the gym keeps, the $42, plus the $8 they got for the commission. 42 plus 8 is $50. So the total cost of the gym membership is 50. That's going to be our B. I want to know the commission out of the cost of the gym membership. So the commission was $8 out of the total cost and I'm going to multiply by 100. When I do that in my calculator I get 16. So that means they got 16% of the total cost as commission. Okay, so now it's still the same 16% rate. And now this employee sells a family pass for $135. What is the amount of commission they get to keep? What is 16% of $135? Well, we need to turn 16% into a decimal by dividing 16 by 100, and I would get 0 0.16. And now I'm going to take what I'm trying to find the percentage of, my $135 for the family pass, and I'm going to multiply it by 0 0.16. And it gives me 
21.6. Well, that's not really in money terms. In money terms, that would be $21.60. Okay. So, lesson synthesis. What are some situations in life in which people encounter percentages? Well, the first one we talked about was tip. And then we also talked about a commission. You um, can see percentages a lot in stores with sales. So especially if you go clothes shopping, they'll have 20% off or 30% off or whatever percent off that they decide. Another thing, um, you can find it in coupons. So a lot of coupons are a percent off. A big one you guys see it in is video games. And also when you're downloading an app on your phone, it tells you what percentage has already downloaded. And then, as Eli would also like to say, you see it in Kohl's Cash. If you buy a certain amount, you get 20% back in Kohl's Cash. Um, so give examples of situations where you would encounter tax, tip, markup, markdown, and commissions. So, tax, absolutely anytime you buy something. Ooh. There will almost always be tax on something you buy unless they have already included the tax in the price. And some places will do that. Now, tip at restaurants. When you go out to eat. Mark up and mark downs, well, they mark something up actually anytime, um, like a store will mark up the price. So they're gonna buy a pallet of, let's say, cereal. They're gonna buy a ton of cereal at a time, and they're gonna get this cereal for, let's say, like $1.50 a box. Well, now you're buying this cereal for like $3.50 a box. They marked up the price. When you mark down a price, again, you see that in sales. Okay, and then stores, you always see a markup. And now commissions. You're gonna see commissions when you buy a car, when you buy a house. Um, and then some high-end retail places will give you a commission um, so like, let's say you go to coach and you buy a $600 purse. The person that sold you that purse is probably going to get a little bit of a commission on that item. Okay. So you can see a commission on big ticket items. That's kind of like the main thing. It's going to be a big ticket item where it's really expensive. So when an item is marked down 10%, so that's like... Here, they marked down the card 10%. Well, it makes sense to multiply the price by 0 0.9 because 10% off is the same thing as 100% minus that 10% because they're taking the 10% off. And that's 90%. Well, 90% as a decimal is 0 0.9. So that's why it makes sense. That's why we keep doing this. It's making sense to multiply the price by 0 0.9 because that is taking 10% off of that 100% the original price. Well, now, a sale, now an item is marked up 25%. If I'm being honest, it's probably going to get marked up more than that um, from when it's made. If you actually watch Shark Tank, 
they talk about this a lot. They say, oh, well, we make our product for a dollar and then we sell it to the stores for three dollars a piece and then the store marks it up and they sell it for six dollars a piece so that is a 600 percent increase so you see this a lot with stores so when an item is marked up 25 percent why does it make sense to multiply the price by a dollar 25 uh, i'm sorry not a dollar 25 by 1.25 well a 25 percent increase would be 100% plus 25%, which is 125%. So I'm trying to find 125% of a number. And when I divide 125 by 100, I get 1.25. So that's why we would multiply by 1.25 if there was a 25% increase. Okay, so you should be able to solve... Um, basically all percentage problems now anyway um, if it's an increase if it's a decrease if you're trying to find a tip if you're trying to find um, a percentage off if you're trying to find anything like that you should hopefully be able to find that the answer okay you guys have a go formative go formative um, unit four lesson 11 if you guys have any questions, please feel free to email me. Have a lovely weekend.